Yeah, Fun Fun's uh, diary um, posting during the lockdown was a phenomenon um, of great importance. Uh, really, I think uh, important case study um, in, in 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 multiple senses. I think we should. Uh, I, I I guess I could say we start by saying that. Um, Fang Fang, I don't think Fang Fang anticipated the kind of uh, um, response uh, her diary would uh, would incur toward the later period of lockdown. And uh, you know, it's uh, it's difficult to anticipate, I suppose. But uh, like like all of us who are regular social medias and you know, a regular users of social media. Uh, she probably was prepared. We are, you know, when we, when we post something, this, despite the platform, whether it was a small public or bigger public, you know, smaller circles on WeChat or bigger unknown publics on Weibo, we have to, uh, you know, uh, understand that uh, it's, once you post there, it's out of your control. Right, uh, because even if you're you post it within a small friend, a small WeChat circle like Dr. Li Wenliang, it, people could take a screenshot of your post and post it every, uh, in other places out of your control, and you never know what kind of uh, uh, response you might incur. <laughs> and someone didn't expect that her diaries would become that popular either. You know, she started the, when she started writing. She just uh, you know was well, she did so because uh, uh, you know she's a famous novelist. Uh, an editor friend uh, uh, suggested, well, maybe maybe you could you could write something about experience, daily experience, and uh, and then she decided to do that, and you know in a very kind of uh, informal, casual way, posting. Uh, not immediately after the lockdown, actually several days after lockdown, she was not among the first to post diaries. But uh, but she's she's a great writer. She's a novelist. She knows how to how to you know. She's a wordsmith, right? She uses she can write in very powerful ways. So very soon her diaries became uh, almost like a cult. She accumulated a, a large following. I I was among the following. I follow her diaries very closely. And uh, many others as well, and uh, to the extent that it became a daily ritual for many people, and I wrote about this in in the book as well, because uh, her diaries, uh, many of her entries were uh, censored, and uh, uh, I don't know for whatever reason, maybe her writing habit, she 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 wrote at night and usually ten, usually posted the and diary entries at midnight, after midnight, sometimes two or three o'clock in the morning. So her followers, her fans would be waiting at night um, to, for her to post, post her diaries and read their diary and posting that day before they went to bed. And some, a lot of them talked about, this is, a, 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 after a while it became my daily ritual. I can't go to bed. I can't go to sleep without reading <laughs> Fang Fang's diary. It's that kind of powerful, uh, almost created a kind of social solidarity, or you might say even imagined um, community, right? Through the reading of her diaries. It's more, more than just nationally, because I know there are you know, students, uh, uh, people in the diaspora like me, we were following her diary writing as well from outside of China. The, the kind of shift uh, happened I think in response to geopolitical conditions, you might say, that's that's what she didn't ex- anticipate, because uh, after and we didn't anticipate either that uh, very soon in mid March we in Philadelphia had our own lockdown, and the pandemic became a global pandemic, and with that we remember now the initial wave of anti Chinese. Uh, anti-Asian racism, hate speech, including you know politicians uh, in speaking in the media, uh, demanding reparations from China, uh, things like that. That kind of discourse uh, became uh, uh, 
uh, I think uh, a major uh, factor in triggering rising wave of uh, patriotism, or you might say nationalism, or COVID nationalism in China. It's at that moment when, as you said, uh, Fang Fang's story became an issue for, for a lot of people on social media because uh, people felt, that, well, you know, yeah, this is the dirty, dirty laundry of your family. Why would you, you know, why would you have an English translation, an and German translation of, of the book uh, published right in the middle of this, uh, this kind of situation? Uh, that was, I, I think, uh, uh, he didn't anticipate it, but, but, but of course it wasn't his fault at all because he, I mean, she, 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 she wrote her diary uh, as a record of her life and her personal thoughts and, uh, and feelings and but some uh, her, her critics felt that she was too critical of the situation in Wuhan, and she was too critical of the local government, uh, local government's handling of the situation. Uh, she uh, Fang Fang kept defending herself uh, all the way to the end, uh, uh, but of course that uh, she was just caught in between this uh, this uh, difficult. I think polarized, there was a polarization in the second part of the lockdown in Wuhan. She was caught in between.